Good morning. Things can really get out of hand around here if you're not watching it. So, hey, so glad that you're here. Welcome to church. Uh, maybe this is your first time. Um, you, welcome to this kind of church. So, happy that you're here. We, uh, we love to have a good time. We love to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. We love to celebrate joy. Uh, we're in the season of Advent, which we are celebrating Christmas, as you can see. It's kind of a big deal, Jesus' birthday, and, uh, and so we're going to celebrate that, but the Advent season is, is really four weeks to celebrate, not just the birth. We finish on the birth of Christ, but we get to celebrate the gifts, the, the, the gifts that he's given to us by coming, Emmanuel, God with us. And so if you, maybe you've never celebrated Advent, thank you for celebrating it with us. Uh, thank you for being a part. Um, typically, if you've ever seen an Advent wreath or, or candles, the way it's structured is the center one really represents the birth of Christ. So tonight at our candle, um, candle service, candle light service, at our candle light service, uh, we're going to be lighting the center candle representing the birth of Christ, uh, and we're going to celebrate together. But what we've done over the past couple weeks is we started by uh, celebrating the first gift that we, oh, I told them, these ones burn your fingers. Gosh, who moved us to these things? Yes. No. <laughs> yeah, you guys. I love this. Great idea. Someone switched to matches. Yeah. No. Okay. Flawless. Um, I'm going to try to... I'm gonna, no, this is the worst part. Then somebody sees somebody's like, man, I just, the pastor found out I smoke and it super sucks. Okay. okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Come on. Come on. I got it. I win. I win. All right. Yes. And I burnt my finger in the process. <laughs> anyway, well, it's pretty serious now. So what we do is we celebrate. The first week, uh, if you were here, we celebrated the gift that we find in Jesus of, of uh, hope. The second week, we, find, uh, we celebrate the gift of love, is that he came. Why were you still sinners? Christ died for us. But he came to this earth even when we had nothing to offer. At our lowest moment, he showed us love. And that's what true love is. The third week, which was last week, we we celebrated something amazing, uh, which is the gift of peace. And, and what we talked about how is Jesus is peace. When he shows up in any circumstance, in any situation, he is peace. We can't find it anywhere else in this earth. The only place that we find rest for our souls and peace is in the person of and in the presence of, of Jesus. And then today, which I'm super excited about, we get to celebrate joy. Um, anybody else enjoy joy? Like... I don't know about you, but if you don't like having good times, there's something wrong with you, not with us. Because <laughs> joy is incredible. It's, it's, it's amazing that it's contagious. And when you meet someone who's joyful, you want to be around that person. A smiley, joyful person will always have friends because we want to be around you. And there's something so amazing about joy. And I love the gift that we find in Jesus that he brought us joy. Joy, it's amazing when you look at all four candles is that... Um, Love is an act of Jesus towards you in which we get to, we, we, we're just, we're thankful, but it doesn't require anything out of you except for maybe a thank you. Peace is when his presence comes and, 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 and you can, can't find it within yourself. It's only him. Hope is the one candle, and I think this is maybe why we start with it. It's the one candle that requires something out of you. Hope requires you to put your trust in him before anything happens. And so this is the one that requires the most out of you, to be able to come in and say, hey, listen, I have hopes and I have dreams and, and, and I, and I want to see, see a better world. I want to see a better future. I want a better eternity. And you actually have to place your hope in him before anything happens. And the cool thing is, is that he's always faithful. He's always trustworthy. And the moment you place your hope in him, joy is the result. Because whenever he fulfills a promise in your life or he fulfills a promise in scripture, the, the natural thing is to be happy. Now, I, um, I don't know what point in my life, maybe when I uh, got married or before I got married, I started thinking about kids and I always had this desire in my heart. There was something inside of my heart that I always wanted twins. Now, I kept that to myself. I didn't tell anyone, but I kept it to myself. And, and I remember uh, after, you know, probably before we were married at some point, I told my wife, man, I'd love twins. And, and, um, and, uh, and so, you know, Titus, this is our first and our oldest, he came along, and he was great. We love Titus, but you don't want two of Titus, you know? Um, 
And so one is enough. One is enough. And we love Titus. And um, he's our firstborn. He's strong. He's incredible. And it was just like, man, the gift of a child is so amazing. And I, but I remember I still had that dream in my heart, like, yes, I want twins. Zion, he's our second oldest. He came along. And um, he's just great. He's sweet. But there wasn't two of them. There was only one. And, um, and then we had our little girl, Eden. We actually had her in Alaska. And man, I got the gift of being able to have a girl. How precious is that, you know? And, uh, and so uh, we had the gift of a girl. And I remember at three, I really, when we first got married, you know, when we were in the discussion phase, it was like, I only wanted three kids. That was my, that was as, as far as my discussion went too. Was, you know, I had three kids. And so I, I never got that that gift, right? I was holding on to it. And, I, and, and after three kids, you're thinking, man, you don't want twins. You shelf that. So I just, <clears throat> just shelf that, you know? And, uh, and so I, I, I let go of that dream, but it was always a dream in my heart that I really wanted twins. And so I just said, hey, listen, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to shelf that. I'm going to thank God for the three that I have. I love my kids. They're absolutely incredible. We're living in Ireland. We're in a pretty uh, tough season of our life. And we just started a business and we were actually living with my brother-in-law. And, uh, and it was not, There was nothing in my life that you would say, hey, yeah, you should probably have another kid. But my wife, she wanted another kid. So uh, am I I making noise on you here? And so I I remember she came and she to me, she said, hey, listen, I want to have another baby. And I'm thinking to myself, like, listen, I could pull out the prenup, but it was three, you know? (laughs) She said, I always thought we said four. I said, you can't do that to me, you know? And uh, anyway, so she, she talked about, man, I just really want another kid. And, and, and I was like, oh, man, there was like this pressure. And I remember I was like, all right, like under, under, under duress, I said, all right, fine. Like, let's, let's have one more, you know? We tried for a week, and then just the anxiety was deep within me. And I just, <laughs> there's, there's no way. There's no way I can have another kid. Like, look at my life. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm completely broken as a human. Like I'm trying to start a business. Like I just can't do it. And after a week, I just, it was probably a couple of days. I just, I just can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. She says, I respect that. And um, she says, but I just want to let you know that that desire is there. It's like, all right, sweet, you know. And it was like a month later, I'm feeling good about myself. And then um, I think, <laughs> and then my wife says, I'm pregnant. <laughs> so, so I, all right, well done. And uh, I just remember thinking to myself like, really, God, really? And um, like, you know what's going to break me. This is going to break me. And it was uh, weird. That was an awesome time of life. And um, she's excited. I'm stressed. You know, we go into the ultrasound at like 16 weeks. And you know, we're in Ireland at the time, which hospitals in Ireland remind us more of like um, the mental asylums that we used to see back in the 70s, you know? Yeah. And we were like, wow, this is really kind of scary. And um, and everything's brick, and uh, this is awesome. So we're in, we're in there and having an ultrasound. Our, our, our doctor was a lady, and super nice, and, and, and she's, you know, she's, we're, we're sitting there, and we're like, is it boy or girl, boy or girl? And, and she says, well, she says, the first one looks like um, uh, it, a boy. And, like, we look at each other, our eyes getting massively huge, you know? The first one? <laughs> and she says, you're having twins. Did you not know that? You're having twins. This is Rachel's face. I have Rachel's face when this happened. Here you go. Yes. Massively excited. And I'm like equally excited. She actually screamed at the doctor, but like enjoy. Not like, rah, you're dead, but like, yay. And the doctor's looking at us and she's like, she's in shock. She doesn't know what to do. And I'm thinking to myself, this was a promise that like I had shelved. I wasn't thinking about the ramifications. No way. Okay? It's just the fact that he heard us. He answers. And she looks at us and I said, I've always wanted twins. And Rachel, Rachel looks up to me and she's like, I have too. And that was actually, I know she probably told me this before. This is like one of those husband moments where she did sure say it, but I just didn't hear it. <laughs> anyway, that was the first time I'd heard it. And, um, and, I'm think, and I'm like, you too? And it's like, yes, there's a desire in my heart for twins. And both of us were freaking out with excitement. In this, in this little hospital room. And it's funny because the doctor didn't know what to do. Like, she's a little bit nervous. Like, like, like she's like, oh, my word. And she, kept, she leaves the room, and then she comes back. She leaves the room, she comes back. And, and we're, like, we're like, are you okay? Because we're just smiling ear to ear. Like, this is amazing. Tell us more. What's the second one, you know? So she, it's a girl. Yes, we get a boy and a girl. We're just freaking out, totally loving it. And she's like, she doesn't know how to handle herself. We're like, what's wrong with you, you know? And she says, this is the first time 
in over 25 years of being a doctor that when I told them they had twins, they cried in joy. She says, this moment, every time I've told someone, it's a moment of mourning. And she says, they break down and it gets really awkward. And she says, this is the first time that someone has ever been excited about twins. And, you know, her and I, but we've prayed for them. Like, this is an answer to prayer for us. And she's, like, trying to remind us, you know this is four and five, right? Like, <laughs> like, like you know, okay. And, uh, and, and it was just like this, this moment where she's so taken back by it. But the one thing I love about joy, and I have this, I like this bucket. This is one of my favorites. So the one thing I like about joy is that, is that when something happens, right, when, when God fulfills a promise, you're with me, aren't you? When, when you're thinking to yourself, now I know why it's everywhere in the room. When God fulfills a promise, when you put your hope in Jesus and he fulfills a promise, you cannot help but be happy. You cannot help but be joyful. When he answers a prayer, it's like, yes, it's happening. There's this little moment that we were having together, Rachel and I. And what it looked like was this, yes. Yes, and yes, and yes. We're so excited. It's the best thing in the world. And what's amazing is this, this doctor standing here looking around like she doesn't know what the white stuff is. She doesn't know what, the, what, what joy is. She's like, I've never seen joy attached to, to a moment like this. And so she's there with us. It's interesting because we're experiencing a great joy because the Lord answered a prayer of ours, a longing that we had shelved, that we'd set down, and that we had set aside that I just tell you I was not ready for. <laughs> and, and what happened was is that joy didn't just permeate our lives. It started to affect the other person in the room. And it didn't come from her heart, but she was like, you know, here you go, you can have some. You know what I mean? Like, like we all get some. And it's beautiful because joy is like contagious and it gets everywhere and it makes you smile. And she kept leaving the room and coming back. We're like, why are you leaving the room? And she said, you should see what's happening. She says, the entire maternity ward is trying to figure out what's happening in this room. <laughs> she says, they're hearing laughing and they're hearing crying and they're hearing giggles. And she said, what is happening in here is permeating the entire maternity ward. She says, everybody wants to know. And what's beautiful is that not only does joy affect me and, and be awesome for me, you know, like, oh, this is great, I get to enjoy it. The cool thing is whenever I'm next to someone, I love this, whenever I'm next to someone, I'm just, just going to get close here, I get to experience joy too, right? And, and it goes all around the people I love, and you get some, and you get some, right? And so as you experience joy, you get, yes, I love it. And it's so beautiful because... It's fun, and it's great. And what's amazing is that it doesn't matter where I go. You don't even have to be happy with what I'm happy with. You just get to experience what I'm experiencing. And it's like, it's the best. It's absolutely amazing. And what's cool about joy, obviously it gets everywhere and on everything, okay? But the cool part about it is that no matter where I go, it follows me. And it leaves a trail. Because the joy that I get to experience inside of me gets to be on the people around me. And so you're like, yes for joy. Yes for joy. And it's so great. Here, we'll just, there you go. And it's amazing because, joy is something that God does in us, but it doesn't, it affects everything around us. Isn't it amazing? Hope is something that I hold on to. You don't know if I'm hoping or what's happening inside of me. Hope is something that happens quietly on the inside of you. Love is an action towards you. Peace is, is the presence of the Holy Spirit. We don't know if you're peaceful or if you're just scary. When we see you, we can't determine that. But when he fulfills a hope and a promise in your life and the result is joy, joy gets on everything. And it's absolutely everywhere. In fact, it's something that he produces in you. You don't have to produce yourself. All you have to do is keep putting your hope 
in him. Galatians says this, and it's a fruit of the Spirit, and this is, this is how he, he describes it. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. He produces love. He produces joy and peace and patience and kindness, goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. There's no law against these things because it's something that he produces in you. And when, when you just get to experience it, when you get to enjoy it, it doesn't just affect you. It's the one thing you get to share. Because everywhere you go, whether it's in a maternity ward or whether it's uh, you know, in any place, you get to experience joy. In fact, we love to share joy. And everything that we get to do, we get to share it. I love it. Yes. It's just snowing. This stuff is awesome. I have it all. <laughs> no, I'm not drinking that. I know. It's on everything. It's okay. You will get it out of your hair and clothes in a long time. <laughs> and it's great on your beard. I love it. Joy is something that permeates around us, that we get to share. And sometimes it's hard to get away from. But you know what? Everybody loves it, don't they? Proverbs 10, 28 says this, absolutely incredible verse. The first, first part of it, it says this, that the hopes of the godly result in happiness. You know, the gift that we celebrate in Jesus is that when we place our hope in him, the result is happiness. Because every single time he answers a prayer is the moment that we experience joy. You know that God can be trusted. He is faithful and he will bring you joy. I talk to people all the time that say, man, I just don't know how to experience joy. I don't know what it looks like. I mean, I feel like other people have it, but I don't have it. And the beauty of joy, joy comes when he fulfills a promise or a hope. Your job is to keep putting your hope in him. And the more that you put your hope in him, the more that he will fulfill his promises, not only his promise in scripture, but his promises to you. And we celebrate on a regular basis. Why are we a joy-filled family? Because we celebrate all the good things that he's done. We can, all you have to do is open up your Bible, to, and, and you'll find almost on every page, there's over 3,000 promises listed for you and for me. And most of those, he's already fulfilled. It's absolutely incredible. Our job is only to put our hope in him, to keep trusting in him, and he is the one who will fulfill promise after promise after promise. We don't put our hopes in anything else. We only put it in him. We as a church, we as a people, we choose to go all in. We choose to put every hope that we have on that bet of Jesus. And you know what? You will never be disappointed. Joshua, he was a great leader in the Bible. In fact, he, towards the end of his life, he had, he had took over from Moses and he led over 1.5 million people from, from the desert, from out of slavery, the desert into the promised land. He said this at the end of his life, which is amazing. Over 1.5 million people that he's connected with, not a single one of all the good promises of the Lord that he have given to your family, Israel, was left unfulfilled. Everything that he had spoken came true. Even the ones that you shelf, even the ones that you hold on the shelf, you say, I'm no longer going to believe in this one. I'm no longer worthy of this one. I can no longer hold on to this one. It says that every single one of them that he has made to his people was not left unfulfilled. It's beautiful. And we get to celebrate all the goodness. You know, it's amazing. In Luke, we've read this before. This is the birth story of, of Jesus. In Luke chapter 2, the angels show up and they say this, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring good news that will bring great joy 
to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem in the city of David. Did you know that the moment Jesus was born, he fulfilled eight very specific prophecies that were given to us, to the world, over a 1,500-year period? So when they stand up and they say, hey, listen, there's some really good news that's going to bring really great joy. Why? Because he fulfilled the promises that he had given to this earth. Very specific ones about a baby lying in a manger, that the Savior would come as a child, the descendants, it would be a descendant of Abraham, it would be a descendant of Isaac and and Jacob, it would be through the line of Judah and a descendant of David, 1,700 years of actual family lineage. Jesus came through. That, like, take that, Ancestry.com, right? 1,700 years that, that, that was completely laid out, exactly the town he was going to be born in, the lineage that he came from, the stars, and what was going to happen in the universe. Eight very specific prophecies or promises given to the world over a 1,500-year period. Of course, of course the angels got out their big shooter guns and were like, guess what? We're celebrating God's faithfulness to the earth. You know that Jesus' birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection, if you look at the Old Testament, there's over 300 specific prophecies about him, and he fulfilled every single one. Do you know what we celebrate? We celebrate a God who fulfills every single promise. How cool is that? If you're looking for a reason to have joy, start there. Start in the fact that he who promised is faithful. And so when we access joy, joy is rooted in the faithfulness of God. That's why joy doesn't, it doesn't matter which day you're in. It doesn't matter which day of the week it is. It doesn't matter your circumstances. Joy isn't rooted in my circumstances. Joy is rooted in God's faithfulness. And so every single day of my life, I can get up and say, well, you did it again. Well done. Well done, you. And every day I pull out my my Bible and I start reading, I go, and you did that one. And you did that one. You know, out of the over 3,000 promises are listed in his word about you, about me, about this earth, and about the Messiah. Did you know that he has fulfilled almost every one of them? And I think he can be trusted to fulfill the rest. And so we as a church, we as a people, we choose to go all in. What do we do? We go all in on our hope. If we're hoping in anything else, I guarantee you, it's going to fail you. You'll have a reason to be sad. But if you keep taking those hopes and those dreams, not only the ones we see in Scripture, but your own, the Lord is so connected to you. He's placed hopes and dreams inside of each and every one of us. My question for you is, do you celebrate when he answers them? You know, like, do you have a time, maybe it's quarterly, or, or maybe you have a journal. Annually, we do this as a church staff, and we're going to do it annually as a church this year. We just stop, and we, we look back, and we write down every single prayer answered, every single victory, every single promise, and we write it for the year. And we've done this year on year on year. We've never failed to completely fill a massive board. Because we are going to choose to celebrate every single victory, every single promise, everything fulfilled. And when we look back at the year, we're all, every, t- every year it's the same. We look back and go, wow, like well done, God. <laughs> you know, like all I did was sit and pray and I felt like you did most of the work. Why do we have joy? Because we're constantly celebrating all the promises fulfilled, all the dreams fulfilled, all the prayers answered. I want to encourage you, start a journal, start something in your phone, and every single thing you're believing for, write it down. Because when you go back and visit it again and again and again, what you're going to find is that he is faithful to his promises. He's absolutely incredible. And so we choose joy because we choose to celebrate his faithfulness. We choose to put all of our hope in Jesus. And he will never, ever, 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 ever fail you. You know, this is my own opinion. Take it or leave it. Um, I'm not going to lay out from scripture where, where, where it, it belongs, but this is my own observation. If you don't want it, throw it out. When I meet someone who lacks joy, what I find is there's a common denominator. And the common denominator is that they put too much hope in themselves. 
They put too much hope in their own ability and in their own wisdom to figure it out. I can do this. I can muscle down. I can make it happen. I can go back and I can rethink it. The issue is, when you put hope in yourself, first of all, you're going to be sad all the time. And the second thing is, whenever you fulfill that promise, the result isn't joy. The result is pride. And so they put hope in themselves and their own ability. I can do this. I can make this thing happen. And then when they finally win, they get proud. Like, I don't care how small the prayer is. I'm just going to put it in God. God, I need help for this. God, I need help as well. I could have done that myself. Well, good. The only thing you're building is pride. You want to actually live in joy? Start putting your hope in him. Let him. Make it easy for him to answer a prayer. I had a friend tell me one time I was complaining about God not answering prayers. And he said, well, try and make it easy on him. Give him one that he can answer. <laughs> All right, I can do that. You know? Lord, help me make it safe to work today. God, help me walk through my day with no sadness. God, help me with. God, help me with. And you know what? We, I started giving him prayers that he could answer. And all of a sudden, man... I stopped taking credit for things. And I found that what increased was my joy. Each and every one of us has a choice to make. I personally choose joy. I choose to celebrate every single thing that he's given us, every promise fulfilled, every prayer answered. And I choose to put every single prayer that I have forward in hope of Jesus. This was one of the miracles of Christmas. When God himself showed up on the planet and started fulfilling prophecy after prophecy after promise after promise, we have a lot to celebrate. That's good news that brings really great joy. And so we choose to celebrate all the promises fulfilled. And here's what I love is that, yeah, we go all in and we're going to celebrate every single promise that he has fulfilled and every single prayer that he has answered. But if you want a real challenge and you want to double down on joy, I give you a little hint. Instead of just looking backwards and celebrating all he has done, in faith, start looking forward and anticipating all he will do. Jesus' half-brother, crazy just like Jesus, he said this in James. Uh, I love how he says this. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for joy. I'm thinking to myself, you're crazy, go nuts. Are you kidding me? Why are you doing this? For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to actually grow. James, the half-brother of Jesus, had seen Jesus fulfill in his lifetime over 300 prophecies over a 2,000-year period. Like he had faith that what he had done, he's just going to continue to do. And so instead of just looking back and celebrating all the goodness, he could look forward. Whenever a trouble or a trial or anything came his way, he's like, this is going to be good. This is going to be real good. You should wait and see how this one's going to turn out. And so not only did he look back, he anticipated joy forward. Why? Because he was rooting his joy in God's faithfulness to continued to answer promise after promise after promise after promise. He lived in this way. Man, aren't we challenged to do that? You think, man, our world's going, going to pot and all this stuff's happening and everything like this. Actually, we're called to, to look at that and be like, joyful. You're not there yet, okay? We're working on getting you there. But when our world is falling apart around us, we're supposed to consider it an opportunity for great joy. Because just wait and see what he's going to do. Oh, just can't. I'm so excited to see how it's going to turn out. I'm so excited to see his faithfulness and how he's going to answer our promises, even in the middle of chaos and brokenness and sadness and despair. We actually have a joy forward if we want it. Paul Another crazy person who, like Jesus as well, <laughs> said this in Romans. Therefore, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus has done for us. I love this. He goes on to say, because our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. And now we stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward 
to share in God's glory. There's something about looking forward, and he finishes with this, and I just love this. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. Interesting. Interesting. That his joy wasn't just based behind him, but he actually was looking forward. Next time you hit a trial, you hit something that's happening you know, and your life is falling apart, the boss says, hey, I need to see you in the office, you're thinking, this is going to be good. You know? <laughs> Next time you get fired, yes! It's going to be awesome! I'm so looking forward to this, you know? Thank you! For I know that whatever happens, I know that it'll help me develop endurance, endurance will strength the character, character strengthens my confident hope. In his salvation, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. There's not a single person who puts their hope in Jesus that will ever be left disappointed. For we know how dearly God loves us. He's given us his Holy Spirit to completely fill our hearts with love. And so our joy is rooted in the faithfulness of God. I want to encourage you to celebrate every answered prayer. Every promise fulfilled. And if you can't find it in your life, just open up scripture. There's over 3,000 times throughout the history of the earth. Hence the word joy to the world. We have a lot to celebrate. And we will celebrate it. And we will count every victory and every blessing. And if, you're even, if you finally get joy in that part and you realize how good he is, I want to encourage you to start looking forward. You can find joy even in the middle of absolute nonsense. Why? Because he who promised is faithful. He will fulfill absolutely everything he has placed in our hearts and he has spoken in his word. It is important that we continue to keep his word first and foremost. Because it is the book that reminds us throughout all of world history, he's still answering prayers today. Man, the angels got it right in Luke chapter 2. We have some really good news. That's going to bring some really awesome joy. And they got out their shooter guns, and they they were excited. And they had this moment. I want to encourage you in this season... In this Christmas season, this Advent season, to actually look at all the gifts and to remind yourself one response is required from you to put everything that you have in hope in Jesus. For He loves you, He will be your peace, He will bring you joy, and it all happened the moment Emmanuel showed up on the scene. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the gift of Jesus to this earth. Thank you, Lord, that you have removed our sin, you've removed our shame, you have come and brought us peace, you've come and brought us joy, and you have fulfilled every promise ever made. And you will continue to fulfill all the promises you've made to us. God, we as a people choose to put everything we desire and long for and hope for in you. And we know that we will not be disappointed. And if you've never put your life, your heart, or your belief in Jesus, today is a really good day. For what it means to be a Christian is one who believes with their heart, confesses with their mouth. We say this, is that we give our belief, we believe in you, we give you our life in return. God, would you use us to change the atmosphere wherever we are? Whether it's a dark maternity room, our maternity ward, or our, our families, our homes, our workplaces, the stores that we go into, Lord, would the joy that's in us, the goodness in us, the celebration of your goodness, would it just get everywhere and on everything? And as we leave today, may it stick to everyone's clothes. Less clean up for us. And a good reminder that you can't just get away from joy. It's just going to be on everything and everywhere. Why? Because you just can't get away from the faithfulness of God. So we give you our hearts, we give you our minds, we give you our lives, and we celebrate you and your birthday. In Jesus' name, amen.